Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Izzati Mtirazidi. So now I would like to present Lambat AP and Lateral Projection. Okay, so this is my presentation flow. I will explain the AP Lambat criteria, true AP position, how to detect the rotation, the lateral curvature effects and the scoliosis series. Okay, so before we start, I would like to explain why AP lama. Okay, so um, even though the AP projection is a common part of routine in lumbar spine, but posterior anterior, which is PA projection, offers advantages. Okay, the first one is um, prone position in PA projection will place the lumbar spine in natural lumbar curvature and that will result in better visualization of the intervertebral disc spaces. Okay, this is because the intervertebral disc spaces are almost parallel to the divergent x ray beam in PA projection. Next, the, um, the PA projection will reduce patient's dose compared to AP. And this is uh, especially in female, which is it will lower ovarian dose 25% to 30% less for PA projection compared with an AP projection. Okay, however, uh, disadvantages, disadvantage of the PA projection is the increased object image receptor distance, which is the OID of the lumbar vertebra, and it will result in the magnification and sharpness, especially for a patient with a large abdomen. Okay, so therefore, AP projection is taken for lumbar projection to reduce the uh, magnification and sharpness of the lumbar vertebra. Okay, so before we start, I'd like to revise the AP lumbar anatomy. Okay, this is the transverse process, intervertebral discs, sacrum, sacroiliac joint or SIJ, lumbar body, source muscle, spinous process, pedicle, and 12th rib. Okay, so first, the uh, lumbar criteria of AP projection. Okay, the first one is the intervertebral joints, spinous and transverse processes. SIJ and sacrum are shown on the radiograph. Okay, you can take a look at the radiograph. Okay, the vertebral bodies are seen without the distortion. The sacrum and coccyx are centered within the inlet pelvis. And the last one, L4 and iliac crest are at the center of the collimation field and including the T11 and the sacrum. Okay, so um, for the true AP positioning, the first one is the open intervertebral D spaces. The spinous, second one is the spinous process aligned with midline of the vertebral bodies and long axis of collimated field. The third one is the sacrum and coccyx are centered within the inner pelvis and the distance from the spinous process and pedicles are equidistant. And you may use also, um, you also may use the criteria of AP abdomen as well. Okay, so the detecting rotation. Okay, before that, the uh, I'll explain that the upper and lower lumbar vertebra can demonstrate rotation independently or simultaneously depending on which section of the body is rotated. If the patient's thorax was rotated and the pelvis remains supine, so the image visualized is the upper lumbar vertebra um, demonstrate the rotation. If, uh, upper lumbar, if the patient's pelvis was rotated and the thorax remains supine, so the low, lower lumbar vertebra will demonstrate the rotation. And if the patient's thorax, um, both thorax and pelvis are rotated, the entire lumbar column will demonstrate the rotation. Okay, so how to detect the rotation? We need to evaluate the alignment of the spinous processes to the pedicle. Okay, the side which demonstrates a greater distance is the side which positioned close to the IR. And the second one, evaluate the position of the sacrum and coccyx within the pelvic inlet. Okay, the sacrum and coccyx which rotate toward the side of the pelvic inlet is the side position farther from the IR. Okay, so um, take a look at this radiograph. This is the AP lumbar projection taken with patient's right side closer to the IR than the left side. Okay, if you can, uh, if you can see, 
the sacral and coccyx is rotated toward the left side, which means the left side is positioned farther from the IR. Therefore, this radiograph is taken with the patient's right side is closer to the IR than the left side. Okay, so um, to improve the rotation, you need to place the shoulders and assist um, both equal distance from the table and align the mid coronal plane um, parallel with the IR. Okay, so next, CR alignment with the intervertebral disc spaces. Okay, so for the AP lumbar, if the patient is lying supine with legs extended, the lumbar vertebra will represent the lordotic curvature. Okay, this is the lordotic curvature. Okay, it, um, the L4 and L5 will demonstrate closed intervertebral disc spaces and distorted vertebral bodies. Okay, this is because the x ray beam is directed at the disc space and vertebral bodies. Okay, so, how to improve this? You need to, uh, patients need to line supine with um, knees flex, knees and knees and hips flex until the lower back rests against the table. Okay, like this. So the lumbar vertebral column will straight and better align the intervertebral disc space parallel with the CR, and the vertebral bodies perpendicular to the CR. Okay, so. Uh, for the lordotic curvature effects just now that, that I had explained, how to determine the how well the CR parallel with the intervertebral disc space, you need to evaluate the openness of the T12 through the L3 intervertebral disc spaces, evaluate the foreshortening of the sacrum, evaluate the distance of the sacrum from the symphysis pubis. So the lordotic curvature will the larger curvature will visualize the closed intervertebral disc spaces. Sacrum will demonstrate foreshortened and the sacrum is positioned farther from the symphysis pubis. Okay, so this photograph, um, this is lateral and AP lumbar projection taken on the same patient that demonstrate intervertebral disc space alignment. Okay, so you can see that um, the sacrum is positioned farther from the symphysis pubis and close intervertebral with these spaces and sacrum is demonstrated for short term. Okay. If the lordotic curvature was adequately reduced, the these, these spaces are open and the sacrum demonstrate less for short term and also position close to the symphysis babies. Okay. So next rotation from the scoliosis series. Um, in patients with spinal scoliosis, the lumbar bodies may appear rotated because of the lateral twisting of the vertebra. And the severe scoliosis is very obvious and it's seldom mistaken for patient's rotation. As you can see on the pseudograph, the rotation is very obvious. While subtle scoliosis change, scoliotic changes can be easily mistaken as rotations. Like this. This is the subtle scoliosis. Okay, the... Scolos patient with scoliosis demonstrate the lateral deviation of vertebral column and the middle lumbar visualis rotation without corresponding the upper and lower vertebra. Um, it means that the only the middle lumbar visualis rotation and the upper and lower vertebra no rotation visualized. Okay, so um, this is the differences of scoliotic patient and normal patient with rotation. Normal patient with rotation. For the AP projection, I have um, divided into two different parts. Okay, so the first one, normal patient with rotation. The long axis of a rota rotated vertebral column remains straight. And second, the rotation has been caused by the rotation of the upper and lower torso and no rotation of the middle lumbar. Unless the thoracic or upper lumbar vertebra also demonstrate the rotation. But for the scoliotic patient, the vertebral column demonstrates lateral deviation. Lateral deviation. And second one, the middle lumbar vertebra may demonstrate rotation with a corresponding upper and lower vertebra lower vertebral rotation like i said on the previous slide which means that the middle lumbar may represent 
rotation, but no rotation visualized for the upper and lower vertebra. vertebra. Okay, so I will start to evaluate the radiograph according to the Pessman method. First one, which is the projection. This is a radiograph of AP projection of lumbar. I say so because the vertebral bodies are seen without the distortion. Next, the intervertebral joints, spinous and transverse processes, SIG and sacrum are shown. Third one, the long axis of the lumbar column is aligned with the long axis of the exposure field. And the last one, L3 and iliac crest are at the center of the collimation field and including the T11 into the, to the sacrum. Okay, next for the positioning, the serograph is taken with true AP position. I say so because the intervertebral displaces are visualized open. Next, the distance from the spinous process to the pedicles are equidistant on both sides. And the last one, the sacrum and coccyx are centered within the inlet pelvis. Okay. For the alignment, the first one, which is the alignment of the extra tube with cassette, it is cannot be determined as there is no evidence of collimation on all four areas of the film. Next, the extra tube with patient, it is cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on all four areas of the film. And the last one, the alignment between the patient and the cassette, it is incorrect because the distance between the central structure to the edges of the film on the left and right side is not equal. The centering point for this radiograph is cannot be determined because there is no evidence of collimation on all four bodies of the film and the standard centering point for this projection is directed to the level of iliac crest. Okay, uh, next for the collimation, the structures that should be included at the superior level are the T11, T12 and the first lumbar vertebra, L1 to L3. At the inferior level, the ilium, sacrum, sacroiliac joint, coccyx, and the lateral is structures that should be included are the sacroiliac joint, transverse process, ilium, and of sacrum. And there is no evidence of any radiation protection apparatus seen on the pseudograph. Okay, for the exposure factor, um, the, for the contrast, the very cortical outline of the transverse processes, which is the thin structure, is visualized. And for the thick structure, which is the very cortical outline of the pedicles, and spinous process are visualized. So for the assumption for the contrast, is, it is adequate and no changes needed. For the density, the thin structure, which is the bony trabecular pattern of the transverse processes, visualized and for the thick structure which is the bony trabecular pattern of the pedicles and spinous process are visualized so the assumption for the density is adequate and no changes needed for the exposure factor for both contrast and density okay so next for the marker there is no evidence of anatomical marker shown on the pseudograph and the marker should with the correct side should be placed correctly at the appropriate area and not superimpose any region of the interest. Okay, like this. This is the left side. And not superimpose any region of the interest. For the aesthetic, the film size used for this projection cannot be determined as the image is from the internet. And the standard film size used for this projection is 35 times 43 cm which is sufficient to demonstrate all the structures of interest and there is no evidence of any artifact on this pseudograph. The last one, name. There is no patient's name, ID, date of examination and any adequate information visualized on this pseudograph. It should be placed at the appropriate area and not superimpose any structures of the interest. And the for the clone Conclusion, this radiograph is not acceptable and need to be repeated as there is no evidence of anatomical marker visualized on this radiograph and also there is no patient's name and any adequate information visualized on this radiograph. Therefore, this radiograph, this projection need to be repeated. Okay, so I will proceed to the lateral lumbar. Okay, so this is my presentation flow. I'll explain the lateral lumbar criteria, true lateral positioning, 
how to detect the rotation, the lateral curvature effects, scoliosis series, and also the spinal fusion series. Okay, so let's revise the lateral lumbar anatomy. This is the intervertebral disc, pedicle, intervertebral foramen, inferior vertebral notch, superior vertebral notch, inferior articular process, spinous process, sacrum, vertebral bodies, iliac crest, and L5 S1 joint. Okay, so the lumbar criteria of the lateral projection. Okay, the first one is the superimpose of posterior margins of each vertebral bodies. And it is appear as one. Okay, next the vertebra align down the middle of the image. The third one, right and left pedicles and the posterior surface of the issue vertebral body are superimposed. And the last one, intervertebral foramina are demonstrated and the spinous process are in profile. This is the intervertebral foramen. Okay, so next the true lateral criteria. The first one is the intervertebral foramina are demonstrated. Next, posterior surface of each vertebral bodies are superimposed and appear as one. Next, the spinous processes are in profile. Uh, the fourth one is the intervertebral. These spaces are open and lower rotate curvature is visualized, which means that it's in natural position. Okay, the last one, the lumbar vertebral column is in natural position without AP flexion or extension. Okay, so this is um, the example of the lump, lateral lumbar vertebral projection with accurate positioning. Okay, so now um, how to detect the rotation in lateral lumbar vertebral projection. Okay, you need to evaluate the superimposition of right and left posterior surfaces of the vertebral bodies. If patient is in non-rotated position, the posterior surfaces are superimposed and appearing as one just like at the previous slide. Okay, so it is difficult to identify which one is the right and which one is the left posterior surfaces of the vertebral bodies. But you may refer to the 12 posterior rib, posterior rib and the posterior rib, posterior rib that demonstrates the greatest magnification and is situated inferiorly is the site of patient position farther from IR. Okay. But if um, the 12 posterior rib is not included in the radiograph, you may identify which posterior surfaces of vertebral bodies appear more detailed. Okay, which means that um, okay, the more detailed, okay, like this, this is, you can see that this is the more detailed structure, which means that this is the structure that is close to IR. So, uh, for this side, this is the side with less detailed appearance of the posterior surface of the vertebral bodies, which means that this side is the um, structure which is farther from the IR. This is because the closer the structure to the um, IR, the more detailed the image visualization. Okay. So, uh, according to this image according to this um, radiograph this is the example of the lateral lumbar vertebral projection taken with the right side rotated posteriorly this is because this is the right side okay, you can see that this is the structures appear not detailed as this one so this is the right side and this is the left side okay, so to improve the this rotation um, rotate patient's right side anteriorly until um, until no rotation of thorax or pelvis exists. Okay, so to improve the rotation, you may rotate patient's side which is farther from the IR anteriorly or posteriorly and ensure that no rotation of thorax or pelvis exists. 
Okay, so next, the CR alignment with intervertebral disc spaces. Okay, so for the lateral lumbar projection, patient's position is in lateral recumbent. And at this position, center of the lumbar vertebral column may set toward the IR, like this. And it will demonstrate the closed disc spaces and distorted vertebral bodies. Because the diverging X-ray beam will not be aligned parallel with the intervertebral disc spaces and perpendicular to the vertebral bodies. And so to improve this, tuck a radiolucent sponge between the lateral body surface and table at this area, just superior to the iliac crest to elevate the sagging area. For a patient whose lumbar column is tilted with the IR, angle CR is needed to align it perpendicular to the lumbar vertebral column. And it is uh, very often the female pelvis causes the spine to tilt upward towards the pelvic end of the vertebral column. Okay, this is an example of the lateral lumbar projection taken with the vertebral column tilted with the IR. So we proceed to the scoliosis series. For the scoliosis series, the anatomy demonstrated are the thoracic and lumbar vertebra including 1 to 2 inches of the iliac crest because it is taken in the erect position. And the position, the thoracic and lumbar vertebra position aligned parallel to the IR as indicated by open intervertebral foramina and open intervertebral joint spaces. Okay, so for the spinal fusion series, there's two, which is the flexion and extension. Okay, the flexion, the lumbar vertebral column will demonstrate a very straight longitudinal axis without the lorotic curvature. And the other criteria should seem as the true lateral criteria listed. Okay, this is the example um, of the lumbar projection taken with the patient in flexion. Okay, for the extension, the lumbar vertebral column will demonstrate an increased low rotic curvature, like this, and the other criteria should be same as the true lateral criteria listed. So this is the example of the lateral lumbar projection taken with patient in an extension position. Okay, so I will proceed to the evaluating image. Um, for the projection, this is a radiograph of lateral projection of lumbar. I say so because there is the superimpose of posterior margins of each vertebral bodies and the vertebra align down the middle of the image. And the last one, right and left pedicles and the posterior surface of each vertebral bodies are superimposed. Okay, for the positioning, this serograph is taken with true lateral position. I say so because the intervertebral foramina are demonstrated. The posterior surface of each vertebral bodies are superimposed. The spinous process are in profile and the intervertebral disc spaces are open and lorotic curvature is visualized. Okay, for the alignment, the first one, which is the alignment between the straight tube with cassette, it is cannot be determined because there is no forwardness of the collimation. The second one, which is the alignment of the straight tube with patient, it is cannot be determined because there is no forwardness of the collimation. And the last one, the alignment between the patient and cassette, it is incorrect because the distance between the central structure to the edges of the film at the superior and inferior level are not equal. The centering point for the pseudograph is cannot be determined because there is no evidence of um, collimation on all forwardness of the film. And the standard centering point for this projection is directed to the level of the iliac crest. Next, for the collimation, the structures that should be included at the superior level are the T11, T12, and the first lumbar vertebra. At the inferior level, ilium, sacrum, iliac crest, L5S1 joint. And at the lateral, the structures that should be included are the transverse process, sacrum, coccyx, and there is no evidence of any radiation protection apparatus shown on the pseudograph.
Okay, so next for the exposure factor. The, for the contrast, the burning cortical outline of the spinous processes, which is the thin structure, are uh, visualized. And the bony cortical outline of the vertebral bodies, L4 and L5, which is the thick structures, are uh, visualized. So the assumption for the contrast is adequate and no changes needed for the contrast. And for density, the bony trabecular pattern of the spinous processes, which are the thin structures, are not visualized. And the bony trabecular pattern of the vertebral bodies, L4 and L5, which are the thick structures, is visualized. So the assumption for the density is it is overexposed and um, the zero curve need to decrease the opacity by two times. For the marker, there is no evidence of anatomical marker shown on the zero graph. In the mark, and the marker should, and the marker with the correct side should be placed correctly at the appropriate area, and not superimpose any structures of the interest. For the aesthetic, the film size used for this projection cannot be determined, as this is the image from the internet. And the standard film size used for the serograph is 35 times 43 cm, which is sufficient to demonstrate all the structures of the interest. And there is no evidence of artifact on this serograph. Okay, for the last one, name, there is no patient's name and any adequate information visualized on this serograph. It should be placed at the appropriate area and not superimpose any structures of the interest. So for the conclusion, this serograph is not acceptable. This is because there is no evidence of anatomical marker visualized on this serograph. There is no patient's name and any adequate information visualized on this serograph. And the last one, the exposure factor for density is overexposed. And therefore, this serograph needs to be repeated. Okay, so here are my references on finishing my presentation slide. Okay, so that's all from me. If you guys have any questions regarding my presentation of lumbar epi and lateral projection, you may ask on the Telegram group and I'll try my best to answer your question. That's all from me. Thank you.